Thank you, Governor, for your leadership and for your support of your Florida National Guard. Director Guthrie, thank you for your tremendous work and of your team, the great work you're doing to ready our state and protect uh, Florida citizens. The Florida National Guard is fully mobilized with over 5,500 soldiers and airmen deployed or deploying. We are ready to provide humanitarian assistance, search and rescue, route clearance, and security missions throughout the area of operations uh, in partnership with our state and local agencies. Over the past 48 hours, the Florida National Guard has been positioned, uh, positioning personnel and units in strategic locations near expected landfall areas to assist impacted counties uh, as rapidly as possible. The Florida National Guard's response efforts are organized around four task force. Task Force 53, our main effort, is operating in the western coastal counties with 1,600 guardsmen. Task Force 164 is prepared to support counties in the central and northeast Florida with over 1,200 guardsmen. Task Force 83 is prepared to provide aviation support for search and rescue operations and commodity distribution. And Task Force 50 is prepared to provide transportation, sustainment, and communication support with over 1,100 uh, guardsmen as needed. In addition, we have guardsmen currently manning state logistic response centers and other warehouses uh, with over 200 guardsmen throughout the state. We're supporting over 20 county emergency operation centers with liaison specialists, and we continue to work mission requirements prior to landfall, including setting up uh, Tiger Dam containment systems around Manatee uh, County Hospital. The Florida National Guard currently has on hand 2,400 uh, vehicles available to include high mobility and high water vehicles.
evacuation area. Uh, we're going to continue to monitor, and we, we advise you to also monitor your local emergency management fish officials and local sheriffs and follow their directions uh, as they put out uh, releases and directions for you to follow as the storm approaches and impacts are felt. Uh, after the storm passes, I would encourage you not to go out and sightsee. Uh, give first responders room to work, room to respond, and room, room to assist those in need. And travel the highways if you, you become disabled, your vehicle becomes disabled, try to get out of the traffic ways. If you're unfortunately involved in a collision, try to clear the roadway. And dial star FHP or 347. Star FHP or 347 if you need assistance. And if it's an immediate emergency, always dial 911. Governor DeSantis, thank you for your leadership, your support of your Florida troopers, and law enforcement in general. Uh, Director Gethry, also thank you for your support. Uh, Florida has great leadership, and uh, we're, we're proud to serve with you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, be ready for impact. Uh, it's going to happen. We'll um, uh, be prepared for, for losing power, of course, and we've been, we've been stressing that over the past many days. Uh, this uh, could have really, really significant storm surge on those coastal areas alongside the Big Bend. And a uh, storm surge of this magnitude is not something we've ever seen in this part of Florida in any of our lifetimes. So uh, please, please take the appropriate precautions and just understand that this is something that, that absolutely can be life-threatening uh, if you were in one of those areas uh, that is in uh, the coastal or low-lying areas when you're met with uh, this type of storm surge. Okay, any questions? Quick question about, about to follow up on the insurance and sign about worry about it. Stuff. And I think right now we're focusing on the response, protecting people, uh, and then getting what we need to go uh, there. Uh, and this is about execution right now. Uh, we obviously can have different different policy uh, debates uh, when the time's appropriate. But, but this is what we have to do to be able to save lives, be able to respond, be able to get people back on their feet. Cedar Key, the vast majority have done it, um, and, and, and I think that, uh, uh, I don't think it's 100 percent, but I think it was a, a lot. I, I think it was a, a big, big percentage, and probably a bigger percentage in some of those really sensitive areas than happened in Hurricane Ian with, uh, with some of those areas that ended up being ground zero. Of course, I think there's been a lot more notice that this storm was likely to hit in this area compared to Ian, because I think we had some track shifts, so I understand how people process that. But we've been talking about the Big Bend now for, for a few days, and I think people got the message. And I think by and large, uh, I think that they have heeded the advice. So um, uh, I would say way more have heeded than have not heeded. Obviously, the storm is going to be pretty significant for Leon County with all the big trees we have. We have had a big hurricane in November. Um, I guess is the state contemplated a contingency plan if Leon County is not able to run properly for the long term. I mean, if there's people saying we could lose power for weeks, months. So we have we have spoken with with the mayor and uh, and recommended that their uh, utility. Most of that discussion becomes less relevant to the meteorological aspects of, of Hurricane Adalia here. You see, this palm tree is really swaying. These, these gusts are well into tropical storm force at the very least. Uh, yeah, powerful gusts, powerful squalls moving through Tampa Bay right now. And a, another heavy squall just, just to my south with those bright colors in the sky. Uh, reflecting those clouds and raindrops reflecting some of the city lights that in spots that have not lost power. It really is amazing how these street lights manage to not lose power and while all the buildings here, all the apartments, everyone has lost power and the street lights just stay on. I'm not familiar with how that power is set up, but it, it really is interesting. I've seen that in all three significant hurricanes, that, that four significant hurricanes, Hurricane 
Irma, 2017, Hurricane Ada, 2020, Hurricane Ian, 2022, and uh, Hurricane Idalia right now on August 29th, uh, 2023. So, very strong winds. And Karen Jacobson, who are going to be joining John Lamola, along with Will Altom and Reed Shepard to handle coverage overnight. So we are going to stay live and local for you with Operation Storm Watch, Hurricane Idalia, back with more 